Cheers guys, Sylph here, and today we're taking you through all the joinable factions within Skyrim, The Elder Scrolls V. Note that I won't be including the Bard's College, because although it is a joinable faction, it's not exactly for fighting, it's more so that you can become a Bard. And you know, the Bards just sing and play instruments, so it's a faction that's out of context with the rest. So without further ado, let's get started. The Blades faction, whose crests are, of course, two crossed blades with a crown on top, referring to their duty as protectors of the Emperor of Tamriel. Their main base of operations within Skyrim is Skyhaven Temple right next to Markarth. What's more, the Dragonborn first gets to know this faction through the main questline once they find Delphine after completing the quest Horn of Jurgen Windcaller. However, it's only later, during the quest Alduin's Wall, that we truly get to know their sanctuary named as Skyhaven Temple. Although the Blades did and still do watch over the Empire from the shadows and protect it, their origins rely somewhere else. They were actually um, dragon killers. They even have unique swords that can only be located within Skyhaven Temple, like Dragon's Bane. Uh, which ob obviously refers to their past as dragon hunters and dragon killers. If you notice here in the video, you can also see that um, their sanctuary is actually located underground, as you can see the light coming from the roof, which alludes to this kind of darky secret organization that protects the Empire. However, unfortunately, they did come to a fall, and it is in The Elder Scrolls V, Skyrim, that they get revived and resurrected because of the appearance of the Dragonborn, which is of course the player, that, you know, represents the life force of the Blades, since, uh, you know, the dra Dragonborn is the biggest dragon killer since he absorbs its souls. One thing that you'll also notice is what's happening right here. At the end of the main quest line, the Blades will, will make you choose to side with them or to side with um, the Greybeards. Because, uh, you know, the Greybeards leader is Parthenax and he was a dragon and the dragons enslaved mankind and committed crimes against mankind and the Blades do, do, did not and do not tolerate that and you're forced to choose to side with them or to side with the Greybeards, which is actually the next faction we're gonna cover. But before we do, let's take a look at Alduin's Wall, the most beautiful wall I've ever seen in my life, which foretells the prophecy of how to defeat Alduin. Next in line are the Greybeards. They dislike the Blades, of course, because, well, they try to kill their master, and um, besides that, the, the Blades always criticize them because they don't do nothing, all they do is sta stand at their temple in High Hrothgar, which is, by the way, the highest peak in all of Skyrim. And this dispute between the Blades and the Graveyards can clearly be seen when you try to negotiate a truce between the Empire and the Stormcloaks. Before the negotiation even starts, the Greybeards deny the entrance to, you know, the Blades and tell them they're not welcome here. And, you know, by the way, if you've never seen this happen in-game or if you've never done this quest or if you don't remember it, I'll be providing a link down below. I've done a video in which you can see exactly what the negotiation is about and what happens during it. As of right now, the Greybeards are composed or formed by five members, four of which are monks who reside within High, or High Rothgar, named Arngeir, Bori, Hainarth, and Wolfgar, and a fifth member who is Parthnax, the Grand Master, who resides uh, within um, the Throat of the World. Another undeniable fact about the Greybeards is that they are masters of the voice, meaning that they can shout and produce a thune. In fact, the, they even teach the Dragonborn his first steps in the way of the voice, and um, just so you know, the difference between someone who can wield the way of the voice and the Dragonborn is that, unlike um, any other common person, um, the Dragonborn is the only one who can truly kill a dragon by devouring its soul. Another interesting side note is that Ulfric Stormcloak, the leader of the Stormcloak Rebellion, was taught by the Greybeards how to wield the Way of the Voice, and they used um, the Way of the Voice to kill Torik, the High King of Skyrim. And this assassination goes completely against the values that the Greybeards 
take into consideration since they are very pacifist and they believe the way of the voice is used not for aggression and its true purpose is to commune with the gods and um, promote peace as a whole basically now let's take a look at the leader of the graybeards this dragon over here Look, greetings. As you can see, the leader of the Greybeards is actually a very friendly dragon. He doesn't try to eat you or burn you alive like the rest of the dragons. And after you kill Alduin, all the dragons that sided with him will now help Parthenax and the Greybeards. Now let's take a look at the Empire, the guys who are trying to shut down the Stormcloak Rebellion. The Empire's main base of operations resides in Solitude, um, more specifically in Castle Hour. Unlike the Stormcloaks, the Empire bent the knee to the Old Mary Dominion and was forced to abide by some of the rules, like not worshipping the god Talos, which uh, the Stormcloak Rebellion obviously adores and wants to worship. This is the main reason why Skyrim is under a civil war between the Empire and the Stormcloaks. To join the Empire, all you need to do is follow exactly the path where I'm going and speak to General Tullius, who is the leader of the Imperial Legion within Skyrim. They will first lay out a test for you to see if you're worthy, and then you'll be ready to take the oath and truly become a member. Now let's take a look at the Stormcloak Rebellion. The guys who win a few good points by trying to worship the god they want to, which is Talos, but then lose a bunch more points because they're racist and they insult everyone who isn't a north. The Stormcloak's main base of operations resides in the Palace of Kings within the city of Windhelm. To join the Stormcloak Rebellion, all you need to do is follow the steps I'm showing you on this video. Um, you will see Jarl Ulfric Stormcloak uh, sitting on the throne and left to the throne is a little room where Galmar Stonefist is located. You need to speak to Galmar so that he can start getting ready to join the rebellion. Like the Empire, they will first lay out a test for you and then, if you're able to complete it, they'll accept you and you'll be ready to take the oath. Next in line is the Dark Brotherhood, a secret organization of assassins who may be summoned through the Black Sacrament. To join the Dark Brotherhood, all you need to do is to head over to any inn and ask the innkeeper for any news. He will tell you that Aventus Arentino is trying to perform the Black Sacrament in his parents' house. Note that Aventus Arentino is an orphan who has been mistreated by Grella the Kind, the owner of an orphanage in Riften. So, it is sum it up, Aventus performed the Black Sacrament to summon the Dark Brotherhood, and you go in there and steal the kill from the Dark Brotherhood. Turns out, the Brotherhood doesn't like that, so they send you a note saying, we know. Once you receive the note, sleep in any bed, and when you wake up, you'll notice that you've been kidnapped by Astrid, the leader of the Dark Brotherhood. Turn around, and you'll see three people who have also been kidnapped, just like you. Then, Astrid tells you to kill one of them to repay your debt towards the Dark Brotherhood, since you stole their other kill over Grella the Kind. After you've done the deed, Astrid will invite you to the Dark Brotherhood Sanctuary to join their family. Once you're inside, you'll meet all the other members of the Brotherhood, namely Arnbjorn, a native Nord that contracted lycanthropy and is now a werewolf, using his powers to perform his duties as an assassin. Babette, a Breton child who is 300 years old and keeps her young childish appearance because she's a blood-sucking vampire. She uses the fact that she looks like an innocent child to her advantage making her assassinations under the name of the Dark Brotherhood much easier. There is also Gabriella, a Dunmer who owns a big spider named Lys as a pet, and even tends to its nest from, the, from time to time. Needless to say that these two work together as a team to murder people. Then there is Nazir, a Red Guard who did not forsake his origins and still wears the Red Guard hood and clothes as well as a scimitar, a curved sword that was forged in the deserts of Ammerfell. Then there's Festus Crax, an elder who claims to be an ex-teacher at the College of Winterhold. He says he left the college because no one there truly appreciated magic as it should be. Obviously, Festus uses magic to perform his assassinations. 
Last but not least, there is Vizara, an Argonian whose origins lay with the Shadow Scale, an old group of assassins who served the King of Argonia. Vizara believes to be the last of the Shadow Scale, which led him to join the Dark Brotherhood. As you progress through the story of the Dark Brotherhood, you'll notice that you lose a few members and win a few more, but I'll leave that for you to find out. Now let's take a look at the Companions faction, who trace their origins back to Isgrimor and a group of 500 warriors who conquered Skyrim. The Companions are a guild of warriors who reside within Whiterun, more specifically in Yorvaskar. To join them, all you need to do is to speak to one of their leaders, like Farkas, Vilkas, Kior, or Aeola, and tell them you want to be a companion. I have a more detailed video about the Companions faction, I'll leave a link to the video in the description. The Companions own a unique forge called the Skyforge, which is operated by Yorlan Greymane, a master smith who can teach you a lot about smithing. Besides that, there is also another curiosity about the Companions. They branch off into another sub-faction called the Circle, composed only by leaders of the Companions. The Circle hold a dark secret that only the members know, and once you join them, they'll tell you they're all werewolves. The Circle also owns their own private chamber named Underforge, located right below the Skyforge. What's more, the Underforge has a secret passage that leads to the outskirts of Whiterun. Let's keep going and take a look at the College of Winterhold, a guild of mages located far up in the northern regions of Skyrim. To join this faction, all you need to do is to go to Winterhold and cross the bridge to the college. When you try to do so, Feralda will stop you and force you to show her your skills as a magician. If you don't have any, you are able to buy a few spellbooks from Feralda and then use the spells you've learned as a way to prove your magic abilities. Once you step into the college, you'll notice they have their own library filled with books and endless knowledge as well as their own librarian, an orc called Urag Groshub. Besides that, they also have many wizards, namely Savos Aran, the Archmage and leader of the college, Mirabel Irvin, the master wizard whom you may speak to to acquire novice mage robes and hood. Then they also have Tolfdir, a master wizard that teaches the Alteration School of Magic, Colette Marenz, Another master wizard that teaches the Restoration School of Magic, Feralda, another one that teaches the Destruction School of Magic, Delvis Nelloran, um, a wizard as well that teaches the Illusion School of Magic, Finis Jester, a wizard that teaches the Conjuration School of Magic, and finally we have Sergius Tyrannus, an expert enchanter who can teach you a lot about enchanting. The college is overall not supported by the people of Skyrim due to its dark past and fear of the power of magic. A long time ago, an event known as the Great Collapse brought huge waves crashing down on Winterhold. Most of the once prosperous city was destroyed. However, the College of Winterhold was magically untouched, which led people to believe that the cause of the Great Collapse was directly related to the mages at the college. The next faction we're gonna cover is the Thieves' Guild. They reside in Riften, and to join them, you must go there. As soon as you arrive to Riften's marketplace during the day, you'll notice Brynjolf, and after helping him out with framing an innocent civilian, he will invite you into the Thieves' Guild. After proving your worth, you'll be awarded with the Thieves' Guild armor. As you might have already noticed, the Thieves' Guild home resides underground, in the sewers of Riften. Besides that, although the Thieves' Guild focuses on stealing and the Dark Brotherhood focuses more on killing, they are both related and often help each other. One of the most important things about the Thieves' Guild are their Shadow Marks, which are placed throughout Skyrim by members of the Guild to leave indications or hints to other members. Let's take a look at them. Here is the safe Shadow Mark. It indicates that something or some path is safe to follow. The protected shadow mark is another shadow mark that indicates that a certain place or someone is under the guild's protection and should not be robbed or assaulted. The guild shadow mark, which is the thieves guild symbol itself, 
indicates that the place is safe and belongs to the guild or that someone from the guild is nearby. The fence shadow mark tells us that there is a person nearby willing to buy your stolen goods. This mark is very important since normal traders and shopkeepers don't buy your stolen goods. Only people identified with this mark do. The thief's cash shadow mark, which indicates that something of value was placed nearby by the guild for other members to pick up. It's basically a way for the guild to help each other. The loot shadow mark tells us that there's somebody or something nearby that the guild thieves has deemed worth stealing. The empty shadow mark, which indicates that someone from the guild already looted the place and there is nothing of value nearby. The danger shadow mark, which tells us that there is something or someone dangerous nearby that can kill you or give you a good fight if you try to steal from them. At last, we have the escape route shadow mark, which tells us about the existence of a way to leave a certain place if you find yourself trapped. This shadow mark can mostly be visible within jails. If you've ever been caught and put into a jail, you might have seen it. Much like the circle in the Companions, the Nightingales work similarly within the Thieves' Guild. The Nightingales reside within the Nightingale Hall, east of Riften, and to join them, you'll need to join the Thieves' Guild first, and once you complete the quest, Trinity Resort, you will be, you will be awarded with the Nightingale Armors, and you'll be a fully-fledged member. You, lo you also notice that the group is very small, composed only by you, Carlia, and Brynjolf. The Nightingales worship the Daedric Lord Nocturnal, which empowers them, giving the choice to pick one of three powers. The Agent of Stealth, represented by the Crescent Moon, gives you the power called Shadow Cloak of Nocturnal, that turns you invisible when you sneak for 120 seconds. The Agent of Subterfuge, represented by the Half Moon, gives you the Nightingale Subterfuge power that makes targets in the area of effect to attack anybody on sight. And finally, the Agent of Strife, represented by the Full Moon, which gives you the Nightingale Strife that draws health from your foes. Next faction in line is Namira's Coven, a group of cannibals who desecrate temples and graveyards to eat corpses while worshipping the Daedric Princess Namira, the Lady of Desecration. To join them, all you need to do is to head over to Markarth and go to the Understone Keep. As soon as you walk in, turn left and you'll find a priest of Mara named Brother Verulus. He'll tell you the Hall of the Dead is closed due to some strange activity within. After you convince him to let you in, you'll hear a woman's voice claiming you're a cannibal just like her. After listening to her plea, the adventure to join these cannibals begins. These maniacs will task you with bringing Brother Verulus, the guy that was guarding the temple from them, into their own lair, which is in Richcliffe, uh, east of Markarth, so that he can, be he can become food for them, because they're cannibals, they want to eat him alive. In the end, the choice always comes down to you. You either kill the rest of Namira's coven, and slay every single one of them, or, you know, you can side with Brother Verilus and not eat a person, and not become a cannibal. The choice is up to you, but know that after you've killed Brother Verilus, there's no turning back, and, uh, you know, you'll be able to eat him, uh, just like all the other cannibals, and become one of them. On this next one, we'll be taking two factions at the same time, because they're both intimately related the Dawn Guard and the Volky Heart Clan. To join the Dawn Guard, all you need to do is, first, to have the Dawn Guard DLC, and second, to go to the Day Spring Canyon, east of Riften. Once you do, a man named Agmar will tag along with you, and together you join the Dawn Guards. Then, you'll be tasked with finding out an old vampire relic, which turns out to be a vampire woman named Serana who has been locked into a vault for a few hundred years. You return her to her father, the leader of the Volkihar clan, and this is where you'll be given the chance to either become a vampire and join the clan, or stick with the Dawn Guard and hunt them down. That I offer now.
Make your choice. So be it. You are prey, like all mortals. I banish you. Now let's take a look at a few facts from the Dawnguard faction and then we'll follow it up with the Volkihar faction. The Dawn Guard is a group of vampire hunters which was dismantled and then reformed because of the Volkihar clan, which are an imminent vampire threat. The Dawn Guard use a unique set of weapons specifically crafted to kill vampires, like crossbows for example. The Dawn Guard have armored trolls to aid them in their fight against the Volkihar. They have smith and archery trainers inside their castle. They also have their own area with workbench, the smelter, the grindstone and a forge. What's more, they also provide you with two huskies. The Volkihar clan on the other hand is the way to go for vampires. They will offer you the vampire lord power, which grants you the ability to become a vampire lord with unique powers and an exclusive talent tree. They also provide you with blood potions which satisfies your hunger as a vampire. They have their own human cattle from which you can feed off of as a vampire. Unlike the Dawn Guard, the Volkihar also seem to have a lot more ingredients, alchemy ingredients to be more precise, as well as uh, some other books, but um, you can acquire those a lot in a lot of different ways throughout Skyrim, so this is not a big plus. However, what is a big plus, and what's very important, is the death hounds which the vampires provide you with. They are obviously the opposite of the Dawn Guard Huskies. That's it guys, that's every single joinable faction in Skyrim covered in one single video. Leave a like and subscribe if you liked the video and want to see more. As always, thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time.